Oh my god. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. <laughs> How the heck are you doing today? Today is a very special day. I know I say that in lots of videos, but today is extra cool. We're taking a field tour of Lumina Field here in Seattle, Washington. It's the home of the Seattle Sounders and also the Seattle Seahawks, of course. So we're going to see the 12th band. We're going to see all inside. Freaking wicked. Today it's it's partly cloudy, a little bit of rain, expecting lots of walking, so I've actually taken the cushion out of my wheelchair, so I've got my leg on, which normally I don't, but I don't want to miss anything. Tour starts right away, so let's get started. DJ, can you please roll that intro? Hey everybody, my name is Andrew Adley. After a workplace accident, I was left as a bump knee amputee. I had a decision to make. Get busy living or get busy dying. Obviously, you only have one life, so I made a decision to get busy living, exploring every opportunity that is presented to me. Tune in every week for different adventures, both from accessibility standpoint to adventures with my family and friends. And every adventure begins with one leg at a time. So this is the start of Lumina Field, guys. There's my band, Gino. The scary thing is I'm a Green Bay Packers fan through and through. I hope I don't drink the Kool-Aid because in my family, some of my family like the Hawks, so. So cool. Anywhere I go, I, I want to do a tour. It's just to experience and be able to see it. They say a little stats about Lumina Field here. It's the second largest or second loudest stadium in the world. And it's because it's built to reverberate the noise. So it's so cool. According to the little bit of research I did here, it was built in 2020. So it's a fairly new stadium. And they, they're really cool. They offer these tours uh, three times a day. So the preseason is coming up here shortly, so we're hoping to get a good tour, maybe get to see the locker rooms, fingers crossed. The girls I've are coming too, they don't really want to, but we're coming. And let's get started. This is the pro shop we were in yesterday. And the show, it's the tour starts at 11. Hey guys, so I have to put a note on this film you're about to watch. The NFL put a rule in place this year that you're not allowed to videotape stadiums, whether the team's playing or not playing. I videotaped the entire tour after talking to one of the tour guides, and at the end of the stadium tour, you'll see that your boy got himself in some pretty deep hot water. Security was not happy. They did a big powwow at the end. I'll go into more details, but that's why some of the clips are kind of cut off. Because I'm kind of picking and choosing what I can show and what I can't show. It's just such a dumb rule. Hey guys, so the tour is about to start. There's probably, I don't know, 10, 12 people here. There's some fellow Packers people. So I won't be forced to drink the Kool-Aid. Send the camera up. As we were walking up, he pulled in right there. I've scanned the tickets, yes. That's why I could say there's 20. So this is the leaving the pro shop, going in. Okay guys, here's round two of security. Let's see if I fit through their metal detectors. 
<laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> he watched my video about BC Place. We know what's gonna happen. All the OG fans will know. So the Americans have it dialed in. I didn't have to go through the metal detector. The guy knew that it wasn't gonna fit. But he still went through all my bags and everything, which makes complete sense. I have no absolutely no problems with that. <laughs> As we pass this law, we'll start down there and separate the days. If you went to school in the state of Washington, this is honoring all the football programs that we have here. There are 372 helmets up there. Yes, some of them do look like uh, NFL teams, which is fine. There's no, nothing up there that looks like the Seahawks. And the ones that are brown, they either don't have a program now or they're changing to a different name. But um, it's really exciting for our guests to come here and say, oh, I went to this school and find it up there. So we'll just move down here so that David and Bess, oh, I'm sorry, I'm Leslie. <laughs> this is Bessie. Good morning, we'll see everyone. Good morning. We need morning. <laughs> so we didn't have enough coffee. Let's go down this way. All of Legend, this was put up in 2015, and this is honoring Steve Largent, Walter Jones, Cortez Kennedy, and Kenny Easley, who played their whole career with us. We retired their numbers, and we also retired another number. Does anybody know what number you don't see on our field? 12. Because? The, the fans. Right, exactly. There are 11 people on an American football team. Because we're a soccer stadium also, we have to clarify that it's an American football team. And number 12 is um, shows that you're a fan. Some small school in Texas, we don't name other schools, appropriated the name, patented it, so we are the 12th. But that's inclusive of you and me and you and Bessie, where before it was the 12th man. So we're proud to be the 12th. Uh, Nordstrom started in Seattle. This used to be one of the most well-dressed cities west of New York City. Now if you were a 12, a Kraken octopus, a Mariner trident, you're very cool. It's a very big sports city. And the rumor is that we will have our basketball team within the next 12 months. So we're very proud to be such a forward sports city. The other gentlemen on this wall are honoring the more than 1,000 Seahawks that went through our program. You can see they do a really good job of mentioning the players of the past, some of the players, the legends that played for the team their entire career, and then the more than 1,000 players that have played for the teams over the years. I'm trying my best to blur the two tour guides out of the of the video and then blur out the locations of the stadium. It's so hard. So the day that we were visiting the stadium, they were just getting ready for the preseason. So it was a pretty exciting day as they were painting the lines and just getting in shape for the upcoming NFL season. So the Taylor guys are saying that it's they've been waiting for months to see this because it looks totally different when it's not set up for football. Old-fashioned, uh, stadium seating, not as good. They were saying that everywhere in the stadium, it's in sections like pies, and it's because of earthquake proofing. So they didn't connect the roof, and then in the corners, it's not connected either because if an earthquake ever hit, it will break off in, in chunks. So it'll kind of help absorb the, the earthquake a little bit better, which I thought was really clever to do. So as I suspected, there was stairs to climb, and this area is pretty historic. This is where they raised the 12th man flag. So in American football, there's only 11 players on the field at one time. In Seattle, they call the 12th man, which is the fans and the, and the crowd. So at the beginning of every game, they select a fan to come up and raise the 12th man flag, which is really historic. You see it all over TV at every Seahawks game. So each one of us got to hold the 12th man flag over the field and get some pictures. As a Packers fan, it was kind of sacrilegious, but I wanted to do it just as history. Race is the flag is always a surprise guest. Somehow associated with Seattle and Washington football. So it could be Chris Pratt and Wichita. And then if you notice behind Bessie and me, there's a truck up there. 
every year Toyota donates a truck. Ah, that's and we give it away. Sometimes we give it away if you're at a Toyota dealer and they say, you ever go to Lumen Stadium? Get into the lottery. Sometimes it's for Children's Hospital. So I was asking the yeah. awesome tenant the about wheelchair base, sitting. All the ones that come around, those are all ADA seats. So all I'm them. curious, like for in Canada, <laughs> when I bring like my daughter, yeah. the rule is you're allowed one person to sit with you uh -huh. in the chair. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed more than that. So a family of three and my wife would have to be back here. If you get in your stadium, like you said, it's first come, first serve. We normally leave every little seat open. Yeah. And so whoever comes first, you're lucky to get up to four tickets. So she was saying, not like BC Place, you can have up to four people in the ADA seatings, the wheelchair seatings within the stadium. All you got to do is co contact guest services and they can set that up for you. It's pretty awesome. Hear that, guys? That's the Hyundais and Kias heading up to Canada. They come on the boat, the port boat. So any of my Canadian fans that have Kias or Hyundais, this is where your car probably came from. It's probably sitting in this parking lot somewhere. It was a privilege to get up every day. Later today. Okay. So Seventy third floor. Sitting the third, sitting the top. Yeah. Yeah. The top yeah. Floor. yeah. The white building See, that's what was the saying. tallest building west of Mississippi until um, 1914. This and white one right here? The pointy one. <laughs> it was the tallest building west of the Mississippi. That's um, even small for Wisconsin. <laughs> I love how the tour wasn't just about Se Seahawks. It was about the Seattle skyline, about some of the history. Even talked about the old stadium here called the Kingdom, which I put up on the screen. It was famously in the news as tiles were falling on the roof. I think it actually fell on top of somebody, if memory serves me right. It was also on the news when they imploded it. So this was March 26, 2000, when they knocked it down. It's pretty cool seeing it just get demolished nothing and just a cloud of dust. And then they show different angles of it. Brings back a lot of memories. A lot of football has been played in that stadium. That stadium was also where the Seattle Supersonics, their last NBA team, played. And then, of course, they had monster truck shows and everything else. They actually kept some of the concrete in the new stadium just to keep that history. I love how the history is decorated up and down the wall here. Here's all their coaches, and there's the very loved Pete Carroll going back in history all the way back to Chuck Knox, which is Meyer, which 1983. Really cool seeing these old pictures of the coaches. You could tell they really, really love Steve Carroll, and this is the new generation, new head coach. New, new, new for the team this year. Hey guys, so I'm in the broadcast booth. This is where ABC is. They say that oh, the windows all open up to let the sound come in. So cool. Let's go on with the tour. The girl that was helping me was incredible. She knew that I was filming. I asked her and she said, yeah, yeah, go ahead. She even held some of the doors open for me. But I really don't want to get her in trouble and show her. But she was incredible. She's like, don't rush, you know. I don't want you to fall. She was such an awesome person. I wish I could mention and show what she looks like but unfortunately i can't her name was bessie if you guys ever take the tour just incredible like she's one of those people that you could be friends with for life just because the way she is just who she is this could go for 150 if you and want to invite your, the rest does that of give me family. drinks and food or no i believe yes, so it includes your food and drinks and Parking? it's a heated seat Ooh, we don't know question. heated heated seat oh. you'll know heated seats are they sold out then? Yes, year in advance. I bet you it's corporations that donated them, right? Oh my God, this is amazing. What? Bessie, like my like her name says, could be your best friend. Man, I wish I knew her last name. I'd send her some money because she was just incredible to me that day. She knew how special it was for me. Hey, guys. So this is the press room. This is incredible. So all these tables you guys see are all press people. Just incredible. They're talking about 
um, what has to happen for FIFA and look at how big this place is holy god and they're getting ready for the game on Saturday which is the first preseason game against uh, Cleveland Cleveland Browns so the other interesting thing they did is you guys see those black sweets over there let's see if I can put down one more hurry those are 49,000 US per seat and the seats are heated and they're sold out it's the first time they're opening them up I'll zoom in there but 49 grand US Isn't that crazy oh, just, this the history is so cool <laughs> Okay. Oh, I so want to go. Well, Todd, you're it. <laughs> Man, if I ever go to a game, I'm going to get Bessie to go with me. She doesn't have season tickets either, but you, you can see she's just a huge fan. I just love to watch a game with her and sit there and BS with her and talk about all the history. So from there, me and Bessie took the elevator downstairs to see the players' locker room. Unfortunately, we couldn't see the Seahawks' locker room, but we did see the visiting team's locker room where they'd be it was interesting talking about the difference in quality and the way they're treated in the different change rooms just the differences in the finishes and stuff So did you guys hear this is the visiting team's locker room so this coming saturday the browns will be in here so after we saw the change rooms yeah. my new friend bessie said do you want to see a secret room well. where nobody else went so she brought me into the post game Please. media room where all the coaches and the players get interviewed that's right next to the change rooms none of the other group got to see it but bessie wanted me to see it and get up on the stage it's just so awesome if any guys know Bessie, give her a pat on the back and tell her to get in contact with me. I'd love to talk to her about everything. Hey guys, so we're at the home interview room for post game. Open the Seahawks lose. <laughs> oh my god! This is amazing. Considering on TV it looks like some big fancy room, but it's not. It's some simple room, but holy jeez. Incredible. See how black the rooms are just that way? Be careful. I mean, coaches like McDonald's. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> Marshawn Lynch. That's where the I'm guys would come walking out to do the interviews after, guys. That's the actual mics that they touch. That's so awesome. Thank you. Of course. Now, we're taking you next. This is the original Seattle Tunnel. This is where the players are all geared up, ready for them to cover. So now. Bessie, a.k.a. Bestie, took me down the tunnel where all the players come. I asked this stupid question about the V's on the wall. Man, I'm stupid. It's the feathers that go down their jerseys and down their legs. <laughs> you can show, see how much Seattle Seahawks fan I'm not, but this is where they get announced and they come running out on the yeah. field. The lights in here on film don't look cool but when you're down there it's just blue you just feel the vibe you're just sucking the culture down it's so cool oh so this is a brand new fan experience place oh, that they've this? got so you can have drinks which is included in your ticket and then the players walk back and forth to the field with the ropes of course keeping them away from you tickets range from about 1200 to 2500 depending on who they're playing i guess a higher team like San Francisco, I guess, is really popular. It's twenty five hundred, but they really range per per game. Forty niners. They're a little more expensive. They're about twenty five, two thousand five hundred. But for for Saturday, for the quickest one, it's only a thousand dollars. Oh, because preseason too. And depending who plays, forty niners. Bestie kept trying to get me to drink the Seattle Kool Aid. Ah, uh, that's what I'm worried about. So we're at field level now, guys. Is this like the grass that they'd be on? No. no. This is different than the one right behind. So this is the real front 
they're playing this is completely different. This is fake. Though. This is all fake. And it's about, yeah. like she said, two inches long, filled with silicate sand and black rubber beads. Oh. This is brand new. It was set up just this year, back in February. So it's what was that worth? That's got to be big bucks. A lot, of, a lot of big bucks, yes. Field level, guys. That's what it's like. Look at all the way up. Oh my god. You were right over there. Oh my god. Okay, we can go. Mike Holmgren. Yep. Packers. Oh my god, Kurt Warren. Oh my god. Oh. So little did I know that my day with Bestie was going to be interrupted now. So that was the end of the tour. We're leaving the grass field and going back to where the pro shop where we started. Let alone did I know that security had caught me on the camera doing my blogs and etc. And were waiting to talk to me there. I guess they were upstairs reviewing all the footage and saw me filming everywhere. And they were waiting to talk to me. They wanted to take the chip out of both my cameras. And... Bestie kept going to bat for me along with Leslie, the other tour guide, saying, you know what? He's just filming like he's just a blogger. He's not asking any security questions, but they were really upset. Beauty, like, were you taking pictures with the camera? Yeah. With the GoPro? Mm -hmm. It was on camera, so they are upset with us. One eternity later. Hey there, guys. So that was an awesome tour. The two tour guys, Bessie and Leslie, Leslie, was amazing. It was so accessible getting to places. I did wear my legs so I could get down on some of the press boxes and areas, which I, I'm gonna put post pictures up here of what, what, what went on, but it was awesome. If you guys are ever in Seattle, ask for these two tour guides, Bessie and Leslie, they were amazing. Um, Unfortunately, I did get in trouble. Here's the but. Um, at the beginning of the tour, they said no filming and being the rebel that I am and wanting to post for you guys, I filmed the whole thing. And at the end of the tour, we came out and security had caught me on video. And they, they were very, very, very upset about it. But I'm the one that did it. I'm the one that broke rules. And the security went back and looked at all the footage. And they were going to take the chip from me. I, I, I volunteered. I said, you guys can take the chip because I, I, I'm in the bad. But in the end, they, um, they let me leave with the chip. You know, the tour, tour guys I had were amazing. I, I think, I honestly, I come back to them because they both were basically friends at the end of the, the guide. The NFL just put this rule in a place, and this was actually the first day that they had this in place, and I broke it. So I'm the Packers fan that broke the rule, first guy to break the rule at Lumina Field about filming. Oh my God, it was an incredible tour. I wish I could I could show the entire video footage of it, but I get it. You know, there's whack jobs out there. They don't want to show that part of it, but I want to show the accessibility part of it. My bad. So I don't know what this this video is going to turn out like in the end. It's probably not going to be very good, but I want you guys to know that you should take the tour. Don't video like me. Don't bring GoPros, anything like that, into the stadiums. But do take lots of pictures. You're allowed as many pictures as you want, but I wish I could share the whole thing. If you guys um, are into Google, punch Lumina Field Tours. There's tons and tons of tours showing online. You'll see exactly where I went and some of the stuff I did. Thanks so much for going on this journey with me, and we'll catch you in the next one. I do release videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Fridays are just shorts, whereas Wednesdays and Friday, or Wednesdays and Sundays are sorry, or what I'm up to. We'll catch you in the next one. Hopefully I don't break any rules. Thank you, Lumina Field. That was an incredible tour. Sorry I was the guy to break the rules.
This is the neighborhood around there. That's the giant Lumina field there. 